March 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 3 from the New Testament. Now a certain man, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council, came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus replied, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a person is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time, can he? Jesus answered, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a person is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must all be born from above. The wind blows wherever it will, and you hear the sound it makes, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus replied, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you don't understand these things? I tell you the solemn truth. We speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen, but you people do not accept our testimony. If I have told you people about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For this is the way God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned. The one who does not believe has been condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. Now this is the basis for judging, that the light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil deeds hates the light and does not come to the light, so that their deeds will not be exposed. But the one who practices the truth comes to the light, so that it may be plainly evident that his deeds have been done in God. After this, Jesus and his disciples came into Judean territory, and there he spent time with them and was baptizing. John was also baptizing at Enon, near Salem, because water was plentiful there, and people were coming to him and being baptized, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a dispute came about between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew concerning ceremonial washing. So they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you on the other side of the Jordan River, about whom you testified, see, he is baptizing, and everyone is flocking to him. John replied, No one can receive anything unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Christ, but rather I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands by and listens for him, rejoices greatly when he hears the bridegroom's voice. This, then, is my joy, and it is complete. He must become more important while I become less important. The one who comes from above is superior to all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is superior to all. He testifies about what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The one who has accepted his testimony has confirmed clearly that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he does not give the Spirit sparingly. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things under his authority. The one who believes in the Son has eternal life. The one who rejects the Son will not see life but God's wrath remains on him.
God, I think the verse that we're most familiar with in this chapter is, is obviously John 3.16, a very concise uh, couple sentences about the entire gospel. And if you're a fan of football, uh, you've definitely seen the signs up. In fact, uh, Tim Tebow played in his 316 game uh, just a year or so ago, where that being his favorite scripture, John 316, uh, during the game, he also passed 316 yards. He averaged 31.6 yards per completed pass. The ratings for the game uh, was 31.6% of U.S. households. The Pittsburgh Steelers' time of possession was 31 and 6 seconds. The game's sole interception was thrown on 3rd and 16. <laughs> God, I doubt that you care a whole lot about football and uh, who won or who didn't. But I know that... Uh, you do care about how we glorify you and, and what an amazing game that one man who insisted on wearing 316 on the black that goes on underneath his eyes during games went on to have such a powerful effect on so many people. In fact, it was the, the most searched word on Google that day. My favorite verse in this section, however, is a little bit further down, John 3.30. It's all over everything I own. <laughs> you must become greater. I must become less. I think that short sentence from the Bible can actually sum up almost all the commandments, can sum up all of the New Testament commandments, can sum up our relationship with you. That if we truly understand that you must become greater, we must become less, then we get everything else. We understand how to put others before ourselves. We understand how to love them like you love them. Not with our filters, not with our ego. We understand how to put your will before our will. John 3.30 to me is just such a powerful statement. That if our agenda in this world is God first... And us definitely second. <laughs> Can you imagine how powerful we would be for your church? That we would put you over politics. That we would put you over fear. That we would put you over the joys that we have of this world. I know almost every single day I get John 3.30 wrong. But it's something I really try and work towards every single day in every single situation. I have to be second. <laughs> you have to be first. And it has to be that way so that your will happens that day. God, thank you for these powerful words that are coming to mean so much to so many people. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. And very, very humbled that you are using Daily Video Bible to reach all of these people. You know, your word, you promise in the Bible, will never return void. How can it not? It is your word. It is coming from a love that you have for us. A relationship you desire for us and with us. Thank you for pursuing us as hard as you do, God. It's absolutely amazing. In your son's name I pray. Amen.